chapter 3, lesson 2, is subtraction with regrouping in the tens and the ones. Okay, so we need to remind our kids 1 and 9, 2 and 8, 3 and 7, 4 and 6, 5 and 5. Reminder again, when it says subtract A and B, the bigger one is on top and then the smaller ones on the bottom. But if it says subtract A from B, then it's going to be B minus A. In the pupil book, there's not much of this, but when we get to the workbook, you will see that it's important that you keep reminding your kids of this. So on page 49, Mental math, again, means only a single place value subtraction. So clearly here, it's the ones that we are subtracting. So the hundreds and the tens remains the same. Four and six, and then we subtract five and three is two. Next, again, it's only the ones that we are subtracting. So that means the hundreds and the tens, same. But the ones we will subtract, that makes it three. Okay, here it's the hundreds that we are subtracting. So everything else will just be copied. So again, the box approach of this is quite confusing. So I simplified, hopefully you can teach the simplified version to your kids. So we take nine minus five is four and we copy the rest. Okay, however, for computational math, and it says regrouping. Regrouping means we need to borrow. That's the term we used when we were younger. So the term that they use now is regrouping. So here, clearly, you cannot take 9 away from 8. So we need to borrow, and this now becomes 3, which means... That's why it's called regrouping, that it's regrouped to make 18. Now, if we subtract, the key is from 9, we need one more to get to 10. One more to get to 10. And we have to get to 18. So that's technically like saying 1 plus 8, which means this must be 9. We subtract again 3 minus 1. 1 is 2. And we subtract again, that would be 2. Okay, so similarly, if we look at this, we cannot subtract 9 from 7. So we will borrow from 7, making this 6. We will regroup, making this 17. We need to get to 17. So 9 needs 1 and an extra 7, which means this will be 8. Okay, and when we subtract 6 and 5, that would be 1. And when we subtract 9 and 4, that would be 5. So again, it's important to remember that these groupings will really help our kids. We can allow them to count with their fingers, but in the long run, we're not helping them. So we need to train them to use this strategy. Now, please do not teach your kids the strategy if you're not confident. Therefore, at this point, since if this is something new to you, you need to do more problems. If you'll notice, this is one and four. There's a number two, there's a number three, and therefore, I would suggest that you start with those first as parents, practice, and then teach your kids so that you're confident and well-knowledged with the topic. That concludes Chapter 3, Lesson 2. See you in the next lesson.